Hey, welcome back to Sandy Park for what promises to be one of the clashes of the weekend in the PWR. Both Exeter and Bristol will be gunning to take the title off their neighbours, Gloucester Hartbury, this time around. And to talk you through all the action this afternoon is Emily Scarrett, who's alongside Johnny Hammond. Afternoon, Johnny. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, we've just kept heading south from a blistering start in, in Bears country last week. Aston Gate was a fine venue for the launch of PWR, but we've brought the Bears with us to Sandy Park, the home of the Chiefs, the Exeter Chiefs. Susie Appleby is in charge in these parts. She's had a, a reset probably more than most over the off-season, but still welcomes five internationals back into this starting lineup. Red Rose star Claudia McDonald gets a wing berth alongside Wallaroo, Laurie Kramer and youngster Katie Buchanan in that back three. Alec Tessier, Canadian, brought in this season to steer the ship from 10. These opening games are tricky. Two more World Cup semi-finalists. Emily Totosi and Delika Menon add experience to their front row. No cleaner Maloney, sprouting red rose. Daisy Allen gets in that back row with Rachel Johnson, a big American cog in that pack. Well, for Bristol Bears, they don't change much to their starting 15. Evie Gallagher makes her club debut, the Scottish international sign just last week, along with hooker Lana Skelton, who's on the bench. Alicia Butcher moves over to the blind side to accommodate Gallagher at seven. In the shortlist for player of the match, Gabriella Negrelli, who surely can't go on to the radar for too much longer, is at number eight. And the only other change is at 12. No Amber Reed, Meryl Smith wears the 12 shirt. We're watching from afar last week, front and centre this week, Emily Scout. Good afternoon, Scaz. It's a bright start in round one, wasn't it? But excellent in Bristol. Some real bite to it, fascinating on lots of different levels. Yeah, really exciting, and I think it's set up this matchup really well. Two teams that are always super competitive, this kind of southwest rivalry we've got down here. I think it's in for a really, really exciting game for us this afternoon. You know, Bristol bursting with international talent. Seven of the eight forwards must relish days like today. They made it very clear, like they said to me this week, it is their year to, to win the whole thing. A handsome win at home against Sale, but it has always been nip and tuck between these two. Exeter double finalists, Bristol back-to-back -back semi finalists If the mindset is for more this year, certainly more than a, a, an away semi-final, games like this are a real litmus test. They're hugely important and actually the season is super short relatively so actually you can't wait till you know after Christmas or the back end of a season to start staking a claim. You've got to get points as early as possible because there aren't that many games in the season so if you're not picking them up now against you know, big, big teams like this then you know what can you? Well Sam's credit has to be used to this club team but especially Susie Appleby to build this hotbed of women and girls right be here in Devon with the team's success at the epicentre of back-to-back cup winners and two premiership finals in that time too but marrying the ambition with a shift in personnel as well as adapting to some uh, EPQ laws it's a big old start to this season for Exeter Referee knows these parts very well. Referee uh, extra gets Saracens and Gallagher men's premiership early in the season. That big win for Exeter. Anthony Woodthorpe is the man in possession of the P. Round two of the PWR. Exeter Chiefs against Bristol Bears. A West Country derby. On a Sunday lunchtime, it doesn't get much better than this. A short shower earlier on, but that has moved away. No breath of wind to speak about. So we're all yeah. set. And Holly Ages, new signing. <laughs> will get us underway. Hold in front. New signing. Tessier. Plenty of rugby at 12 and at 15 for, for Canada. That's Tessier. In at 10, Liz oh, McGovern. Wasn't that her best in 
couple of finals really over the last couple of years so a change at 10 of course a change at nine as well for for Exeter. no flo robertson she's gone off to to harlequins burks sarah burn in that uh, midfield she could play centre couldn't she really? lobby bot meets his game last week gallagher evie gallagher to Bonner, Mika Bonner on that right wing. Aitchison, Bottoman, part of this, effectively in all England. Front five for, for Bristol. Wills. Two structured teams, these two that like to keep hold of the ball. I did say to Dave Ward this week, because it is a case of just, well, it's my ball, I'm, I'm not going to let you play with it. Yeah, exactly that. And I think, you know, you look at traditionally lots of teams will go through phases in this middle part of the field. If they don't necessarily get anywhere, they might kick the ball. That's not how Bristol play. They've worked a penalty on this exact example, so they've kind of got all out of it what they need. And they come through as well. Great tackle from Tessier. Abby Ward, try scorer last week. What a day the Ward family had at Sandy Park. Aitchison, lovely one up from fullback. She often joins that line, and then Deb Wills. And all those to bring out her son last week. Crept up field now. 10, 12 metres shy. Akin Davis is there to clear out, and Bristol again. Using the big runners, Delaney burns that time, just trying to suck in the Thank defenders. Aitchison, Gallagher uses a decoy, Murray. Counter run from Exeter, but the penalty is there for Bristol, and all of that ends in a, a straight arm from the referee. Yeah, look, Bristol just keep the ball so well, and it's going to be a feature we're going to see it all afternoon. They just go through their phases, they get such good field coverage between forwards and backs, and they're just moving the ball edge to edge, working defences. They're looking for that inroad either through that Ella Lovabon break on the outside or through a penalty and give them this opportunity through their forwards. We will see a few of these today. Driving line out. Key weapons for both. Both scored eight tries last week. Seven to them try scores for Bristol, but Next to one and one tackle at that line out. That's what Abby Ward was taken tackle! to the ground. Great accuracy from that defensive set from Exeter Chiefs. Comes Ward again. Tackle the floor. She's never been away. Smashed on the corner of the ruck. And the bottom of Advantage being played for the away side. It's a really bright start from Set Bristol on, here. Yes. Now they go wider. Oh, no and we'll have offside. that penalty for offside. offside half out the Captain Scats, what do you do here? Three points? Not if I'm playing for Bristol, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think they, they obviously chose to get the ball out there and go right. There was probably a better opportunity on this left side, much more field space. Deborah Wheels on this left hand side. Tap to God. Short, training ground short move. Hands. Everybody knowing their part. Sarah Bird took the took the ball in and then there's another little pocket of forwards here waiting. Butchers is part of it. Short. Gallagher. Mighty defence from Exeter, isn't it? And just as I say that, they do manage to squeeze in the tiniest of holes. Gabriella Negrelli. With the first try of the day, and, and it was coming, wasn't it? Stoic defence from, from Exeter. But in the end, the hole was there, the, the dam burst. Yeah, and it's brilliant execution from Bristol. They're so patient when they have the ball got themselves into this area of the field in the first place. Couple of penalties, 
And then the forwards all just gather around and they know exactly what's going on. Again, just the patience. They're not rushing it. It's not about speed pick and goes. It's about control. It's about getting your, your mates with you. And then in the end, it's just too low and too powerful that close to the line. So, so hard to stop. an excellent patient start from Bristol, isn't it? I think it's going to be really interesting how this game develops now, because if Exeter keep kicking the ball to Bristol, they could potentially not see it for large periods of this game. So interesting to see how they figure that out. Yeah, possession is, is key for, for both these teams. Over 55% possession. On average, last season, Bristol had the ball. Most meters, most line breaks, all that kind of jazz that, that comes with it. The two sides who, who like to play. Wait! Yes, yeah. There's deep to Aitchison. They'll just change their kicking game slightly. Holly Aitchison. And the snow seal now retired, of course, as the 10 foot Christopher Solon. Claudia McDonald sets up in a Claudia McDonald type run. Of Deb Wills. She's very important to Exeter. Isn't it all around all this structure and whatever that we have between Bristol and Exeter. She's a real bit of stardust, isn't she, in that back line? Yeah, she's so good. Such a good runner with ball in hand. So powerful. You can see as immediately she got the ball, she picked her head up. She, she saw a couple of forwards on the edge, tried to take them on, then looking at the space in behind got to get players like her on the ball so that's the one of the big challenges this afternoon for Exeter big old fend as well for her try against Leicester really from nothing Fernati breaking and a handoff from Claudia McDonald five more points Gabby Cantona will comfort blanket for Tessier in that midfield and Deutsch has been held up but has got that ball away Tackle! No Ball over the top for Lazy Apple. Let go! Fernando Vernon. Jeffries. Only missed two of Exeter's Premiership games. Evan Jeffries. <laughs> 59th appearance today. Extra 60th Premiership game. It's their turn to have some possession. Continues, Poppy Leach. Van der Velde, Cantora. Oh, this is not a start. Step from Deutsch. From Bradley. There's that spaces on the left hand side, but Burns has done really well for Britain to hold that ball up. Cantona, being that first receiver. Exeter. This is going to be Dick Dock, certainly. Advantage over from the high tackle. I think he said initially it was on the shirt from the high tackle. So I don't think he, he classed it as one. I think he classed it as a on the shirt. And what a brilliant play that is by Hannah Bottomham. We were just thinking extra getting through some phases, hands on ball, looking really nice, actually slowly starting to build some nice pictures, stressing that Bristol defence. Things like that are huge, huge plays when you're five metres out from, from the goal line. See her there, straight over the ball. She's so strong and so incredibly difficult to move when she's in that position. Greeley used as a battering ram. She's a, she's a young player. Lots of people are talking about. 
130 metres last week. About 15 carries. Six tackles as well. That flat pass has been allowed to move on. Murray looking for the one two, didn't come. Aitchison. Good hands, but it's good defence as well from Exeter. Key from an Exeter point of view here is just don't give a penalty away. Let Bristol go through their phases, see if you can nick one or make them kick the ball back to you because they're going to Or try and counter up as they have. Or do that. Don't punch. No development brought into this. Next to the side, Harriet Mailer Mills is uh, on the bench today. She was in the, uh, the starting lineup last week. Nicola Friday is on the on the bench as well. But this Bristol place. front five, okay. especially a, a real worry for teams Fuck. around here. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it, when you've got a, a front five that can and probably have at some point started together in an England shirt. They are phenomenal athletes, especially that front row. You know, they're not just good at their, you know, their primary job in terms of scrimmaging and line-out, but they're phenomenal around the park. Lock Davies, uh, Lock Atkin Davies, excuse me, yeah. tops try scorer for the last couple of seasons, isn't she, at various different clubs. So, yeah, let's hope that they get plenty of ball in hand today. Yeah, just, um, just 62 tries, Skaz in her last 51 Premiership appearances. <laughs> Like this side, stay high, please, that side. Phenomenal strike rate. Look up, Davis, Bottom and, and Sarah Byrne. It's an embarrassment of, of Richard's Ilya and Clark coming on the bench today, Scottish International. Simi Pam is the Bye. loose head replacement. Gwynne Purse, the Gwynne P, the Welsh International. Can't even get in the 23 at the moment. Ball squirted out, but Lovibon was on hand to make some good ground. The great line up very, very quickly. Rachel Johnson and Maisie Allen hunting down bears. Sarah Byrne half gets through. He just a pull back. And they find themselves on the 10 metre line, bottom of Not committing many to the ruck, are they? And that ball is still over, and Kat Dorner comes away with it. Claudia McDonald, she wanted that one to go much further. Wrestled away with uh, Alicia Butchers. Look on for no Bristol way. Exeter Scrub. They've come back for the scrum on that one. Potentially a bit lucky. Sometimes when you kick the ball, referees think that that's the, the advantage gone, but quite clearly in that case it wasn't. Again, Exeter just, as much as we talk about Bristol and their patience in attack, Exeter have to be really patient defensively, wait for those opportunities to arise to maybe attack a breakdown, counter ruck as we saw earlier, or potentially have the opportunity to steal. But the, the one thing you can't do, especially when Bristol are trying to run out from their own 22, 30, 40, is give away cheap pens. I had a, a chat with Susie Atterby this week. I had plenty of chat about dogs and beach and, and all the rest of it. We did get on to rugby at some point, but uh, yeah, just talking about Alex Tess, yeah, yeah, it's not easy, is it? Brooke Bradley's uh, been here uh, a while, former Worcester player uh, herself. But a new 10 does change a lot of things around the structure, does it not? Yeah, I mean, you want a 10 owns it, don't they? Or a good 10 owns it. They yeah. they dictate where we're playing, how we're playing, you know, who's getting the ball, all those sorts of things. So for a brand new 10 to come into a setup where there is a very clear structure, you know, nothing much will have changed from last season. You know, she'll have had to get up to speed incredibly quickly. You know, great pedigree in her own right, winning in the French League last year obviously Canadian Brent. international, so I'm sure it won't have take her too long, but inevitably it's always going to be a bit clunky, I think Susie used Set. as the word for, from last week. Good solid scrum, here's Rachel Johnson. Big, big player for Exeter, gets through bags of work. Menon, another North American, Canadian tight head. 
Ridley whips it out, Cantona, Dutch. Backwards, backwards. Ball round the back from Laurie Kramer, it's gone backward, said the referee. Van der Berg. A little cameo from her off the, off the bench last week. But Bradley Tessier, nice and flat. Turnover work is there from Nicrelio. I think it is again. Young number eight. That's two in, in two entries, pretty much, isn't it? I mean, again, just a, a unbelievable plays if you can get over the ball in that area of the field, give your team possession back when you're under the cosh, five metres from your own try line. Nice little break here from Johnson off the, off the side of the screen trying to get again Claudia McDonald into the game again playing some really nice stuff just pulling that Bristol defense had created a really nice opportunity on the edge there just couldn't quite finish it off but brilliant turnover in the end the brilliant line out throw as well right top of the throw who will catch that three. one under okay. a lot of pressure as well three back three out you get Sarah Bird with don't take it down for Okay, that's one. back gloves just driving the cab here. And use it! It's not a person who's tried to, to have leather sling back gloves, to be fair. But... Oh, yeah. so in by Exeter, look what it means to them. They know what a weapon that is for Bristol, vice versa. It's going to be a big weapon for Exeter as well, but it's those little moments that. These players are going to feed off today because it is so nip and tuck. Yeah, and Exeter probably needed one after conceding those two turnovers in the 22. But you thought for all money as Bristol had got that rolling ball set up so well, moving forward at a decent rate of knots. Unfortunately, just couldn't recycle the ball, couldn't get the ball out as the referee was asking them to use it. And now a really nice opportunity for Exeter to, to strike off this scrum. Crouch! 27-44 last week, but uh, Welford Road for Exeter. Eight tries, as I said, five of those from driving line out, so it's a, it's a real weapon for Exeter as well. Dunham comes into the game. Never forget that tries for Central Five now in the World against Kimberley. Really crucial part of the game, I think, now for Exeter. Good kick from Tessier, maybe not quite into the 22, but gives them another opportunity, another entry. When you look back at points per entries for 22s, you've got to be coming away with, with some at some point. And against a team like Bristol, you might not get too many opportunities, so a massive period of the game, I think, for Exeter now. I feel like you have to score from one of these. First part done well. Allen off the back of the line out. Tessier wasn't a planned move. Eventually it does get out wide. Kramer. <laughs> Tough one to bring down. She's strong. She's physical. She's 20 years of age. Those players are a transitional coach of the Red Roses. So she's on the radar. Cantona. And a big bleeping dot on the radar for a long time. Gabby Cantona, excellent player. McDonald finds herself out. Great covering tackle from Bonner. Bristol. I mean, I'm sure they'll stick this back in the corner, I would have thought, but Exeter, you can see exactly what they're trying to do. There's a nice variation of going through the middle, but there's also finding quite a lot of space out on that left touch line. Buchanan, as you mentioned, it incredibly difficult to bring down. Just fighting away, trying to stay in touch. They have got into the corner. 
by Charles last week. Emily Totosi right in the middle of it. And it's pleased them somewhat because no doubt this conversion will go over and will be all seven points apiece. Exactly what they needed. It's such a weapon for them. It was last week against Leicester Tigers. It's what kept them just ticking over in terms of the scoreboard and keeping control in that game. Their setup is so secure. Again, you think of a Bristol team who was so well drilled in this area of the field as well in terms of the line out and the rolling ball. Just really patient, crab sideways for a bit and then just broke around the corner. Stayed tight together and Emily Totosi again. Not shy of the try line. seven apiece just past the first quarter here at Sandy Park this is the game we wanted isn't it seven all 20 minutes gone looking down the barrel of 60 more minutes of hopefully really tight good quality rugby from two teams that are really you know put a huge emphasis on the, on the win this afternoon last five one with a home team through these two five of the last seven decided by four or less an aberration last season next to a handsome victors here, but don't know much about that second Bristol side. Most importantly, semi final time is exit to Huwa Negrelli. Heavily involved again, keeping Rope Mahan Marston out of the side. who was one of the players of the season last oh, season. The Number eight. Communication from the assistant referee. Look on by Exeter in the black shirts. We still did that last time as well. Just yeah. looked to, from that kick receipt, okay, went to go. the middle and then came back well. down that that short side. But this time Exeter, yeah. they were waiting for them and they probably didn't get enough depth on the ball. Weren't able to actually go on and attack it. Meant Claudia McDonald on this right touchline could come up, put pressure on. And it was unfortunate oh, it was a knock on off her, not the other way. Looking to back up that handsome foot at five win. Yeah, one last week. Bonner. That's a great angle. Looking inside now. Support wasn't quite there. They, they knocked this on. Referee wants to play for Vargas. Just see what we come of it for Exeter. Nothing does. Both sides just finding a little bit of space out wide. In this oh, it's, a, it's a real shame it hasn't come to much, but off this off this scrum they managed to get the ball out to Deborah Wills who just looks like she's going laterally for all money and you're thinking straighten up straighten up but just drops Rini Cabana underneath that Exeter defense is all headed towards the sideline finds a really nice gap back on the inside of Merin Deutsch and it's just unfortunate she gets back well to make that tackle to be fair to her but I love that love love to see some strike plays off the scrum Johnny don't we all? Don't we all? They're good at it as well, Bristol. Bush. Bush. Set. 44 of their 107 tries last season, your first phase, Emily Scarrett. I don't waste my winter evenings, I can tell you. Tell you what, the whole of the Bristol front row have got up and looked at the referee there. I mean, they never agree, do they? No. But especially on that one, they felt like they were going forward. They had the ascendancy. Oh, 
he struggled with uh, the referee than anything else last week extra at, at scrum time. No to Tosin and Menin. Make a, a difference in that front row. Van der Velden in behind as well. A recognised second row. She's a, a tall figure. It's Bristol with possession again. Bottomman. Aitchison tries something a little bit different and they are trying different things, aren't they? There's Yannick. Flicks that ball up. Harry Kramer. And now McDonald. There's that fend. Back inside to her fullback. The uh, Wallaroo again. Nice variation from Bristol. Yeah, lovely. And Holly Aitchison is so good at this. We talk about a passing game, but she's always looking for these little options in behind. Tell you what, Maisie Allen, who's defending in the in the back line there, reads that fantastically well. Doesn't come up too hard. Gives her the ability to check back and go and cover that kick and just oh, tell you what, Claudia McDonald tiptoeing down that touchline. Again, that's this is where we want the game to break up a little bit. Give Exeter those opportunities to counter attack. Get Claudia McDonald, get Buchanan on the ball. Crutch! Spines! Have to do without uh, Clean and Maloney. <laughs> Typically, bomb storming performance at Welford Road last week. Thanks to the hooker, just a, a slight factor to her. Uh, look at that pressure, they brought him squirting out. Burgess was under a huge amount of pressure from Bradley. Brooke Bradley does a brilliant job there. She recognises the ball, like you say, has just squirted out the back of the scrum. Bristol not able to control that as it comes to number eight's feet. Just hustles, gets back on her feet really well. You could question whether there is a release or not, but nonetheless, she's going forward. She's in the ascendancy. And the Exeter girls love that. Games have been decided on this. Rachel Johnson, another line out option for Exeter. I'm surprised if they try and rumble this one in. So effective is this line out drive. Telescopic arms in the way, and the bottom are just making a nuisance of herself. And they want to stay as a pod here. Decided to go to the floor. Various penalties. Huge hit on Bradley. Extra come up. Still. And they've got over. They got over, but it was being held on to by Totosi. And Bristol had the penalty. Looked like they were over the line through Totosi again. That's the third one that Bristol have nicked on their own try line, pretty much. Quick tap. Here, just watch Abby Ward. Lines are oh, up, no, absolutely no, flattens her. What a shot that no, is. No. The speed to get back 10. And then again, they're just going at the line. It's Sarah Byrne on that occasion just gets over the ball. Extra got to get tighter on those carries when they're doing that. It's three times they've been turned over now. What? Go to the left line. 7-7, seven, seven. moving towards the half-hour mark. We said it was going to be tight. Phoebe Murray, Dr. Phoebe Murray. It's a, a ball to Bonner, who's standing still. Good shot to do, works with it. The cannon is in there, setting this one up in the a more. Bonner is taking that ball in, so it's held up, it is. Excellent out the scrum. Great defensive set. We spoke about Buchanan and her attacking ability. But Exeter held really good shape defensively then. They just covered the width. They let Bristol come to them when they play those big wide passes. There you go. 
and they're able to get the ball. Things to improve on, of course, Martin he was. Stay to the left of the place. Thank you. That's fine. I just, the same dress we have in there. All right, let's go. Just very happy, of course, with a with a handsome victory at home, and seven tries scored, yeah, and, and all that kind of stuff. But he's a man who tries for for, for perfection. I was talking about going wide just for the sake of it. And that was one of those occasions. Yeah, exactly that. I think if we saw a replay, that was probably opportunities where there's sometimes they do just need to punch through that middle, you know, use that lead option that they always throw at the line, just to offer different different things to that defensive unit so they can't just sit, fill the field and wait for them to get to the edge. And the right to go wide. That's a big, big penalty for Bristol Bears at scrum time. Big penalty. That Holly Aitchison normally gets on the on the ball today. The average sort of around 30 odd metres per kick from Han Holly Aitchison, which is yeah, considerably more sort of on the average than they did last season. Just a bit shorter today. Tackle Meryl Smith. Okay. There at first receiver. She's an excellent footballer. Aitchison out wide, a lovely ball. Can wide really quickly. Ward with the bottoman. Red Rose Company. I get to. So Bonnie snatched at that one. Now the head, Bristol. You feel the annoyance from up here in commentary. It's a rare mistake from Sarah Byrne with ball in hand. Tessier had that pass cut away from bottoman. Cantona still with ball in hand, this huge, huge space. In behind that Bristol line, and the scout was pointing feverishly at it. Just love to see Exeter just get potentially just a little bit more excited on those turnover balls, not to panic, not to rush things. Somebody pick their head up, see where the space is. There is always space somewhere on turnover ball, whether it's in the backfield. Up, for a little, maybe a push in behind and a chase. Everyone stay connected, stay okay. Or maybe the other side of the breakdown. There's always space somewhere. And I think they're, at the moment, they're brilliant opportunities for Exeter to go at this Bristol game. Tell you what else is a really good attacking Press. opportunity, John, in the centre field scrum. Great minds. Bye. Just about to make that point to you, Skaz. Okay. Yeah, stand up, stand up. This is lovely, isn't it? You outside backs love Very these. Close, Middle of the scrums. If we get the ball, we do. <laughs> Come on, piano pushers. Let us play. The penalty, of course, last time at scrum time to Bristol against Delika Menon on this tight head side. Over 50 caps. Starting the last 14 games for Canada. Uber experienced. But they are getting a shove off, but the ball just about gets away. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Get out of the air. Brilliantly. Johnson. Head down. Ball available again. Tessier. Menin. And that fanned up against Bottomman. Round the park and a scrub time as well, those two head to head. Allen. Just about brought down by Phoebe Murray. Van der Velden. Captain when this whole project started out. Claudia McDonald in the tight spaces. Deutsch. Exeter growing again here. Allen. That pace. Over that gain line. Menon. That's Tackle. short now. Let it come. Held up over the line, no. is she? No, you can't play it. Hands on the rope. Oh. 
referee's going to sort this one out because it's a big old pile of bodies. Where is the ball? We can see it through there now. And we are going to go to our television match official, Dan Jones. I'm giving it, Skies, you. Well, it looked it from the stationary picture that we had, but I suppose the key is... Let me know when you start those. seeing um, it. should be coming up now, Woody. Round, I've found the ball on the line. So we just need to clear our boots. Say otherwise. I've never got a question. We've got an on-field decision. Yeah, we'll see. Which... Um, over to you. Okay, so there's nothing conclusive from what I can see, so we're still going for the decision of the try. Happy? Yeah, exactly that. Okay. That's good. crucial that they came away with points and now taking the lead in this game much better patience from them this is how it all started Lucy Burgess just dives in as the, the Bristol nine it means that that defensive unit is short on that far side brilliant kick brilliant regather by Buchanan and that then starts Exeter into that tight stuff just keeping hold of the ball fantastic physicality at the line and patience oh, that's being able to squeeze over, taking them into the lead in this game. Can torn up. Was accurate kicker in the league last season. There we go, for Exeter and USA. Seven point lead for Exeter. That will please Susie Appleby, who's uh, down there talking to Laura Jane Jones. Anyone who thinks that the best seat in the house is sat next to Susie Appleby when extra are scoring tries, I can assure them it's terrifying. Susie, you seem quite frustrated despite the fact that you've got the lead on the board here. I'm just frustrated because um, there's a system that we should be working in our attack in 22 and we haven't been, um, which, is, which has meant... Oh, which has meant we've um, squandered opportunities in the attack in 22 and we know how cru crucial they are. Uh, so that's frustration. That said, I think we're playing well, and I'm pleased with a lot, many of the bits that we're doing. It's, it's a game of momentum, isn't it? And the momentum's kind of shifted in our favour right now. About five minutes into the game, Johnny Hammond said, this is going to be a ding-dong. Is it the game you expected Bristol to bring? Yeah, 100%. They're trying to move the ball into space. They're challenging us, they're challenging us in those outside channels. Uh, they're challenging us around with their big collisions. And at the moment, we're making pretty good decisions. As I said, we've had four entries in there and we've only come out with two. In fact, we have five. So you cannot squander those opportunities. But that said, you know, we're, we're moving around the field well and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty pleased with what we're doing. Cheers, Susie. Back to you, Johnny. Thank you, LJ. It's a bit risky to go to Susie Appleby live in a game. She lives and breathes every single moment, and people like that just are the bedrock of this game. Don't chase Absolute the ball, bedrock please. of this game. Menon. There's a menace with ball in hand. No. Having a tough time with a scrum time today, but... Kramer. It just looks a little bit off script from Exeter at the moment, what Susie was alluding to. And I think the bit, the outcome of what she's alluding to is the fact that they keep getting over to, keep getting turned over. Hannah Bottoman, the largest probably pilfer of the ball at the moment. But yeah, they're just getting a bit loose if that's the right term and not by throwing the ball around but just in terms of their contact skills they're allowing these bristol players to get over the ball lift the ball yeah. got to be much closer much tighter in those breakdown areas 
There's been plenty of turnovers. It's both sides here. Last year's finalist. It's last year's semi-finalist. Murray in a short line. Tackle beautifully absorbed by Maisie Allen. Just rode the tackle, allowed the, the weight and the pace of Phoebe Murray just to come over her shoulder. Textbook stuff from the sprouting red rose, as called Maisie Allen. Well, the Packers not giving up that seven shirt easily. Sadi Cabez, there are thereabouts as well. No, Here's Sarah no, Burge. No! Certainly has that England number three shirt. Burgess, Aitchison. Last minute before half time, here's Smith. You see what she's trying to do. They knew there was space there, not many defenders. She's impressed, Meryl Smith. Just neat and tidy, going about her business nicely. Yeah, I think she'll be a good addition to this Bristol backline in terms of how they play. Amber Reed, obviously, we're so used to seeing in that 12 jersey. But Meryl Smith, really tidy, as you say. Works the ball well, coming off the back of a very successful WXV campaign, obviously, with Scotland. She'll have loads of confidence coming back into this. Plenty more rugby coming up for you today. Harpers to. Robert Kingston Park for Newcastle Falcons uh, against the uh, Exeter Chief Men's. Obviously, they're on, on TNT Sport. Uh, more women's sport on the way tonight as French champions Leon. The Gunnar Gump in the D1 Feminine. Coverage starts at 8 pm on TNT Sports 4 and Discovery. Injury here to uh, to Maisie. That's uh, Linda Van der Mellen, isn't it? Down there. We missed a brilliant turnover from Maisie Allen when we were chatting to Susie Appleby. And how good has she been coming into an England setup <laughs> as a real youngster? She was fantastic for a couple of seasons for Exeter. Coming into an England shirt, started the last five, uh, not started, played in the last five games for England throughout WXV in the warm up games. Such an exciting prospect for our game, I think, somebody like Maisie Allen. It was interesting, we popped to, uh, to, to Penny Hill Park to, to watch the Red Roses before you. They flew off to, uh, to WXV down in, in New Zealand, of course, they, uh, they won that inaugural tournament and virtually to a player coming off. Yeah, who's training the house down? Maisie Allen, Maisie Allen, Maisie Allen. And some compliment from uh, what is a highly successful and very settled Red Roses team. There she is. 22 years of age. Just a like 15 tries last season in her 16 appearances. They've got this nudge on at the scrum, haven't they? Bradley just about gets it away. Deutsch. Just can't quite get their timing right, Exeter. Because they've, they've got the edge. They've got the ability to unlock that edge. I, I said it. I was like, tip. Because if they can just get that last little bit away and just get their timing right, they've got the opportunity down that left touch line. I tell you, Deutsch was looking for that pass, wasn't yeah. she? But Bristol haven't found touch, and that's an important issue, isn't it? Because Bristol would have had that line out and fancied their chances for the driving more, but as it is, it's the end of the first half, and we said it was going to be absolute nick and tuck, and it, indeed it is. Bristol play more to, to their plan, really started with that uh, Gabriel Negrelli try. And then Exeter responded themselves. Emily Totoshi, the Canadian international. Rachel Johnson, the USA international. But it's a ding-dong battle. We always knew it was going to be. Round two of the PWR. Half-time at Sandy Park. Exeter 14, Bristol 7.
Welcome back to Sandy Park for the conclusion of this West Country derby between Exeter and Bristol. Always a tight one, this. Both teams got off to a good start last weekend, but it's Exeter who have it here at the break. So let's hand you back to our commentary team for this one then. We have Emily Scarrett, who's raced back up to the gantry to join Johnny Hammond. So thank you very much. Yeah, we're up here in the uh, the warm and the dry. I knew this one was going to be a really tight affair between Bristol uh, and Exeter. Five of the last seven decided by margins of four or less. They met in the cup a, a few weeks ago. Different clubs using the, the cup in, in, in different ways. Try to be a fair reflection, but Hannah Bottom was certainly getting the upper hand at scrum time. What do Bristol need to do to, to get back into this game, as, as it were, and back ahead on the scoreboard? I think, first of all, they need to come out not feeling like they do need to get back into it, because I don't think, you know, they're necessarily out of it as soon as you start chasing the game too early. I mean, they're only one score behind, so they've just got to stick to their plan. Um, you know, for me, they could probably be a bit more direct through the middle just to, to really utilise those opportunities that they're then getting on the edges. Uh, a fraction more depth as well, just again, to be able to take those players on on the edges. But um, as I say, it'll be about going back to type for them, doing what they do, and trying to do it better. You're absolutely right. That width that they were, they were trying to play with, earning that right to, to do that spoke about that in the first half so 40 minutes between two teams you suspect will be there or thereabouts come the final shake-up of this season Alex Tessier the, the new fly half the new quarterback here at Sandy Park gets this second half underway in the white in the dark shirts is and Deutsch tackles her opposite number, Phoebe Murray. Two young centres on the periphery of, of England to Tosi. That turnover ball, it's a great turnover, isn't it? In the Bristol 22, Cantona. Delaney Burns with the tackle, and again they go on that right hand side, down to Belden. Heavily strapping, no changes to either side. Bradley whipping that ball away from, from scrum half. Tackle, he's the floor. Many has got a knee to Grant Cantona. Oh, can't take it, and Smith comes away. That's a lovely oh, run, and Bonner just about caught by Allen. Starting again. It's just looking at the stats this week between these two last season, their performances. Just hardly anything between them. And Davis just gets that ball away for Deborah Wills. And it was about turnovers today, and that's going to be the reckoning on the final scoreboard. Exeter have started this second half really well. <laughs> really well and, and this is the danger of if you play the way that Bristol want to play these are these are the opportunities that you, you give up to, to opposition turnovers in really critical parts of the field twice Bristol on a turnover and on the kick receipt have tried to run out from their own 22 that's how they play you know that's how they want to play the game but if you're going to do that you have to be so tidy there Delika Menon getting over immediately over the ball there's just too much space initially for her to get get a shot on that ball Deborah Wills just holding on and it gives Exeter now an amazing attacking opportunity five meters out from the triangle Ella Lovibold is uh, the lady after an excellent round one over 200 meters only heard Deborah Wills in the entire league over 200 meters last week 15 carries for one out and a try to boot as well. Really nice player in under 20. Line out. 
and secured by Exeter to Tosi with the throw. And she will have got her hands on this ball again here. It's been splintered though. Yes. Bennett piling forward, Exeter. Again. And who's at the bottom of the pile? It's Rachel Johnson again. Two for the USA International. Just felt as soon as that turnover was given, they were going to go to the corner. You know what's coming. We saw it time and time again last season. We saw it time and time again against Leicester. And now here at Sandy Park as well. Yeah, there was an, an inevitability around what they were going to go to and how they were going to go about scoring this try. Brett decided to break away from that rolling wall and Rachel Johnson again. She's so dynamic and powerful from the base. Bristol defenders potentially just not quite tight enough, not quite low enough around that breakdown. But again, a fantastic score for Exeter. Eighth entry into the 22 for Exeter, so starting this second half already, getting more points for their visits. Jesus, every moment of area, we should get a top tour. So the same result, though. three from three from her boot. All the extras at it. I'd have loved to have heard some of the chat at half-time around. Basically, do not let Bristol steal any more of our ball five metres from the try line. And you can see it immediately. Everything just looked tighter. It looked more compact. To a large extent with these teams. I know what's coming. To Tosi, had to work hard to get underneath that for the Canadian oh, international. Another 20 caps now. Had an excellent W N three. Try to get some And it's France as well. Ball is back with Sarah Burton. Burgess whips it away for Abby Wall, but she's stood still and was hit hard as well. But Delaney Burns has now added some pace to it, but somehow Claudia McDonald has pickpocketed that ball away from Lovibot. Buchanan again with the turnover, isn't it? She's having a brilliant game so far, both sides of the ball and in the tackle. Nice, that catch of Buchanan. Oh, McDonald is popping up in various places. Too long! Strong, isn't she, Buchanan? And Burns, double hit on her, but we were playing advantage for Bristol. seen in this second half just the contrast in styles in terms of receiving two kickoffs Bristol attempt to run out from their own 22 extra catch one phase and immediately want to get rid of the ball immediately want to play or defend in a slightly nicer area of the field neither are wrong it's just the two styles of, of how the, these guys want to go about their rugby love that with some of the hits coming in today nice nicer place <laughs> there's too many nice places out there Usually physical game between two teams littered with international stars. Speaking of which, the World Rugby's dream team of the year, Mark Atkin Davis. Tackle! Blue ball! Jeffries is told to get her hands out of that. We don't mention her much, but she does so much of the hard work, doesn't she? Love bond. Oh, defensive line coming up from Exeter. Counter Ruck. Burns for Aitchison. Smith. Oh, he with a step, but there's extra players there to, to meet them and forwards as well. Kenneth. Trying to find opportunities to counter Ruck here, Exeter, aren't they? And they've turned it back over again. Bradley has seen the space there, but she's put too much on it. Pointing again. 
<laughs> Can't help it. Such a shame. That was exactly the right option. Claudia McDonald was charging after that. It's really unfortunate. It just wasn't able to, to give us the foot race that we all wanted to see. But Exeter's defence has been brilliant in that last set. They're just holding their space. They're not giving Bristol any easy opportunities to make inroads and then they just they sit patiently and they wait for an error that that time it was sarah byrne with the knock-on but especially impressed with the wingers actually claudia mcdonald and buchanan yes, they're almost parked right. just inside Dead the five meter line and they're right. they're pretty Jason much staying ball. there and they're saying well you come there. to us because we, get, we think that's there. what's going to happen okay. and then they're not having yeah, to chase they're able to be there and, and meet this Bristol attack as it enters. Mind your gaps, please. Fascinating insight to the, uh, the outer backs. Five, score, uh, uh, big old bragging rights. Not there. Going straight across. Going across. Come over here. Move over here, uh, please. Rocking. Coach. Make sure it starts before you put the ball in. Don't just have to do this. We've just been poking yeah, the bay, I suspect, at right. half time. This, no one's uh, going through the mark. Exit okay. the front row. Stop on the mark. The English are better than you, aren't they? Oh, bottom is getting the, the best of you. He's a, he's a canning operator, Steve. He works very well with Susie Appleby. And Ben Martin's been brought in as well uh, as, a, as a backs coach. He's taken a, a lot of pressure off, uh, off Susie Appleby. Play away. Yeah. Johnson play away. comes away yes, into that midfield. He's still told to leave it alone and they go back down that short side. It was healthy as well. That's why Johnson's run was so lateral to Tosi now. Tackle needs to fall. Bradley again sees that space in behind. Well, it's a much, much better kick from Brooke Bradley. She's got the right yeah. second time. Yeah, it's a brilliant kick. Fair play to her to pick her head up, see that space. Execution on it, just kicks the back of the ball so you get that lovely end over end roll that kicks itself off down the touchline. Fantastic application of pressure again. Extra just in the right areas of the field at the moment. Changes, early changes for Bristol. Hannah Bottoman leaving us and uh, Gabriela Nicarelli. Simi Pan, Roe Master Malhern. Here is Simi Pan. Ball with Exeter. To that midfield trying to tie in those defenders, but Bristol are resisting at the moment. Cantona, Allen, no, 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 no. Johnson, always a willing runner for this Exeter side. Allen looks down that short side. Velda has got past Aitchison and keeps pumping those long legs of hers. The Dutch international. Bonus point. The ambition here for Exeter. Cantona smashed back by Master Malhurt in the tackle, but still possession there for Johnson. Ball bobbling around. Referee seen a knock on. And another visit comes to nothing for Exeter, but this game has definitely, definitely moved the way of, of Exeter since the break. Yeah, they're certainly having a more energetic start to this second half in the first 11, 12 minutes. Brilliant kick from Brooke Bradley, as we spoke about. Then they're able to get up, steal the subsequent line out that was a Bristol ball. And then again, just go through a really strong period of looking after the ball strong carries through johnson and co but again i think 
we could have a camera on Susie Appleby, I'm sure she'll still just be really frustrated that they're not able to come away with points when they're in this area of the field and showing real ascendancy in the game at the moment. She looks quite calm at the moment. There you go, same mark again. Against a, a former club, of course. Player and yeah, coaches, coach all three West Country teams. In fact, lost to Hartbury and Bristol and now Exeter, of course, started this this all off for Exeter. And fair play, developed and, and matured quite brilliantly from Buckham. Nine losses. And Losses. No one lost shake. No one lost shake. Made their 60th Premiership game. No one lost shake. Won a couple of cup titles and got to a couple of finals and no one lost shake. Certainly favourites last year. Till the circus rolled into town. Good win for Gloucester Heartbreak yesterday afternoon. 52 points to 14 over. New team Leicester. Big one for Saracens as well. That's the other new team Ealing. Trail finders. Bristol. Come quickly here. Burgess. It's part of the plan. Here's Smith. Please, let go! Stopped in her tracks. They've got Sarah Bird's number so far, haven't they? There's Maisie Thank Allen with the with a tackle. Aitchison just hammers it downfield. Ori Kramer. McDonald. Very happy to go the wrong way around. That's what happens in front space. Extraordinary ability to do that, Claudia no. McDonald. Jeffries. Finals on her bell tour already. George to Totosi. Very, very near to be turned over there. We're offside. We're offside. Is, is We're offside. Sarah Byrne, I thought she turned that ball over, but Abby Ward was, uh, was offside and they have a penalty directly in front of the six. And of course, they'll go for close. Is that the point you're about to make, Scott? It was indeed. Really smart decision making, just takes it your past shoulder, that. Your, your shoulders up and the head is on head. They start on the mark, you come to the left. Same as it's been on Takes it past it. that two, two try you, score. And you one in their but again, just Bristol just not able to exit, whether it's through a run or a kick, you've got to get yourselves down the field as far as possible and back that up with a really strong kick chase if you've decided to kick the ball. And Claudia McDonald is such a prolific ball carrier that she's able to just take off and Abby Ward there, you see, never never retreated back on side, so despite the fact the ball's bobbled out, she's always in an offside position. Easy enough for her, three more points. 24-7. Well, the tale of this first 20 minutes in this second half has just been better game management, in my opinion, from Exeter. In terms of the kicks in behind, being in the right areas of the field, taking points when they're on offer. And I was just thinking not long ago, I wonder how long until we see Kira Bevan come onto the field for Bristol. And she's just entering the fray now. Mm. Have an excellent crystal ball, don't you? Is it exclusively rugby, or is it to do the lottery and stuff as well? I wish. But but Kira Bevan coming on, she'll give this Bristol side that that better potential game management. She'll inject a bit of energy into it. She's got a fantastic kicking game, short kicking game. She'll just add a bit more impetus to this Bristol attack, I think. Yes, she made a real point last week coming off the bench. She's not happy a season international. Buchanan again, absolutely outstanding at the breakdown. 
not one of these unsung heroes, isn't she, in this exercise? We spoke about to Eva Jeffries as well in that back row, but Katie Buchanan just goes about her business really well. She's been brilliant, you know, and, and Claudia McDonnell will get a lot of the headlines on the other wing, but she has been fantastic this afternoon. I think we spoke about it earlier, a real all-court game. See that quick release over the ball. Bristol will be disappointed. They, you know, when a winger gets over the ball like that, you should be backing yourself to blow her off the top. But fantastic turnover from her. Remember the semi-final last year here, her streaking down the wing against Saracens. She's got, she's a huge, huge talent for the future. Or now, actually, as she's proving. 20 years of age. Remember what that was like. Bevan whipping that ball away as he's away. McVarley on as well. Meryl Smith is, uh, has made way, made a Bristol debut. Very good account of herself, the Scotland international. McVarley, probably of Worcester, was, was coming before the uh, demise of, of Worcester. Knock on there. Just seem to be, to be rushed at the moment, Bristol. You think back to the, the penalty down here. But Lucy Burgess took quickly. That wouldn't have been part of the plan. This is the pass is being snatched out. Yeah, they're just not quite getting the joy that they, they normally get from the way that they play the game. And sometimes you have to adapt and change. Sometimes you've just got to keep doing what you're doing, but, but do it better and be more accurate. You know, they made a few unforced errors in this in this second half already, a few knock-ons at the line. Missed line out, etc. Key things in key areas of the field that are just giving extra opportunities at the moment. Somehow Rachel Johnson has, has held on to that ball because again, just getting the nudge on, had a bottom over the opposite. Simi Pam is there, and again there's a huge amount of space and McDonald is screaming after this. She takes Lovabot. Dead Wills really up high in that defensive line. There's huge amounts of space there, a deliberate tactic from Exeter and Bradley. Well, Bristol at the moment are just operating with one person in the backfield, so it means that there's, there's space somewhere, and at the moment it's down that far touch line, and Brooke Bradley is picking it exceptionally well at the moment. Five tries in the last five games. I'm try and assist for Bradley last week against the Tigers women. Oh, this is again having to show some real strength. And pick up Salisha Bridges. Dave Ward is actually directly behind us with uh, Tom Luke, the assistant Bears coach. Won't repeat what was was said, but uh, let's just summarise. He, he wasn't overly happy with that decision. The referee's decision is final, and uh, it's an extra to line out in this 22 again. Three tries on the board already. It really has been only one team in this second half. And the Coffin spluttered at Welford Road last week. Much more assured performance in the second half now. Cantona, Tessier, McDonald, Wait. Standing behind each other. They get that ball, it's another matter. And here comes the exit. Driving line out to Tosi. Stops for the first time. Stop again. Just trundling forward. Juggernaut like. They've been doing plenty of this practice this week, Bristol. New World is coming from the driving line, and that time, Bristol do hold on to the ball, and therefore their scrum and that defensive work that they've been doing this week has paid off that time. Abby Ward did a brilliant job there to defending that. Always deemed legal by the referee. Again, it looks like that really patient build-up from Exeter. Just crab inside was and then look to 
just peeled kind of around that corner. Abby Ward always bound, came straight through the middle, got hands on ball as they splintered off. And that's her afternoon done for a fantastic bit of play to get Bristol the ball back. Oh, Rose roses going off, like that from Davis. Abby Ward as well. Holly Cunningham kind of replacing Ward. Lana Skeldon making her Bristol debut. Development off as well. Jeffries making one well as well. So Harriet Miller Mills, there she is. Bye. Oh, two men of yours. Good to see her back. Set. Tour around the States, didn't she? Yeah, I think she had a brilliant year or so doing other things, but just so good to see her back. She's got such an iconic running style on a rugby field. She is brilliant 60 66 caps for england just a phenomenal rugby player and a brilliant person to have around a team environment as well and wonderful wonderful skills as well a little tip off last week for one of the tries to harriet miller mills coming into this scene now they've got a nice line out as the drizzly rain has set in here at sandy park I was just about to say, it's a shame this rain is starting to come down, especially with Harriet Miller Mills on the field, because she'd probably give you a behind the back, through her legs offload if she had the opportunity to. She's that sort of a player. Again, he set off with the line out. Miller Mills is here in midfield. Security really for Cantona, there's Tessier, McDonald, bobbling ball. That was in the end. Oh, another bond. Lana Skeldon, what a player to add into the mix. Gallagher as well. He's a, a squad of real, real quality Bristol. Inside now. Tackles inside. There's one. And use it! No. No. Tackles, tackles inside. Puts them uh, into line. touch. It'll be a uh, line right out there. to Exeter again. Nicola Friday is, uh, is on the field as, as well. Bristol just can't get themselves out of their own half at the moment. They are going to the boot rather than trying to run it as they did in the first half, but just gifting these lineouts back to Exeter. Yeah, it's really tough for them at the moment, and especially the way they play. They will not want the rain to be coming down because it makes their style of play much more difficult. At the moment, they're in a bit of a, we've got to try and arm wrestle this back of Exeter and get some momentum in this game. Totosi to, to Poppy Leach, to Totosi at the back of the driving lineout. That's said so many times, but he's just not looking after the ball, and Lana Skeldon very happily gobble up those kind of opportunities. Sarah Burr to Simi Pam, this explosive, dynamic ball running front row that we still have on now. Well, they didn't before. Tackle down my point time. with Delaney Burns. Now three caps to her name. Hitchison. This is better for Bristol. Managing to find a little bit of space out there. And Varley, the latest runner. Hitchison. Master Mulher. Rather isolated. And therefore, she picked the ball back up herself. And Sarah Byrne is spinning and twisting her way up to the halfway line now. Thank you, 19. Bevan. Aitchison. Phoebe Murray. Cunningham. Aitchison has slipped away through there. Needs support now, it's there. 
in the form of Kira Bevan. Kramer is there for Exeter, though. They're pouring back Exeter. And they turn that ball over. Katie Buchanan is there with Laurie Kramer. It's a brilliant turnover from Exeter. Bristol finally getting themselves into this second half in terms of just punching a bit through more the middle. Exeter filling the field so well defensively. This is how they get their joy. So it's Sarah Byrne with the carry in the end. This is where it all started. Oh, it's the Holly H's and break, excuse me. Just giving herself an opportunity to take someone on one on one. Kira Bevan in support, get themselves really nicely in behind. But then they're just not able to keep hold of that ball and recycle it. Be lots of questions asked, I think, from Dave Ward below us as to whether they're on their feet, but nonetheless, it's Exeter ball. Nicola Friday, former Ireland captain, no longer involved in that setup, sadly. Here she is again. Wait in front. Wait. Yeah. A really good rugby play on her. Bobby Leach is, uh, is offside and Kira Bevan sets off. Butchetson, Cunningham, Murray, Varley, Wilkes. That Cessia is having that ball downfield. Luca Bonner is opening up now. This final 10 or 12 minutes or so of this PWR round two game. Final game of this round two. Wins for Sale and Gloucester Hartbury and Saracens. Nibbled away at that. We were playing the advantage for the, uh, the penalty. Just getting themselves on the right side of a penalty count at the moment. Bristol, Exeter just got to be really careful. They've had such joy when they've been on their feet. They've been patient. They've allowed the errors to come to them. But a really crucial moment in this game on 69 minutes for Bristol inside the extra 22. Got to come away with something here to keep this game alive for them. Mary McDonald. Happy six years to happy birthday to her new scrum half, the Scotland International. And Feyenoordy as well, new signing. Storming run of the ball. Maisie Allen. Sydney Pound though, powering away forward. Burr. Sarah Burr. Pulls one back for Bristol with 10 minutes to go in this game. Brilliant try. Exactly what Bristol needed. 17. Just around the corner, really, really simple from that breakaway from the mall. Just getting some of their big ball carriers on the ball. Simi Pam to start with, Sarah Byrne around the corner. with the two points, there is Sarah Burt. It's her last involvement. Elian Clark is okay. coming up for her. No time off for the moment, Hold on. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to pause. There's plenty of uh, communication going on 
luckily uh, away from from your viewers but there's a potential hair pull dan jones the uh, teller's right official is he's pointing out to our referee uh, potential hair pull anthony woodthorpe so she goes through. Here's the best angle. So the left hand pulls it back. Oh, yeah, pulls it back. It's uh, Demi Swan. So we're looking at this more than just penalty. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so it's a hair pull by one black. Uh, it's worth the other time to go from there. Yeah, I agree. One. We're looking at a uh, little bit more than a uh, penalty. It's a uh, yellow card for Demi Swan. Back with her by hair. Now, Hope Rogers, of course, at the moment. Demi Swan will be brought in. Formerly of, uh, of Worcester. Hope Rogers, hope we see her back in the new year, just getting herself right. But yellow card, it's nothing in it but uh, Time is off. dim the rules. Laws. 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 It sets us up now, these last 10 minutes. 15 v 14. Okay. Bristol ch ch not chasing the game, but certainly trying to get themselves back into it in, in this final 10 minutes. And Exeter now just, they're going to have to manage this really carefully. Back Penalty count, areas of the field, all of the important things to, to keep this lead. Importantly, they've got that ball back and it's a 10 point game. Master Maher, Aitchison just had a look around it. Murray and Varley. Great to be Callan there again. It was promising from Phoebe Murray, wasn't it? And Meg Varley. Combination of centres they have now with, with Smith, yep. Amber Reed. Bumping a bruise on her shoulder with his five day turn and got Gloucester. Next Friday night at Aston Gate. Deliberate knock on from Exeter. Bristol penalty. Line out for Bristol. Let's uh, get some thoughts now. It's tense. Last 10 or so minutes. Laura Jane Jones is safe down there with Dave Ward. No, I'm not sure if I am safe, if I'm quite honest. Every time I come down to one of these coaches, they get the advantage. Dave, 10 minutes left, 10 points in it. Player advantage. How do you play this now? Yeah, look, we've got to just continue what we've been doing in the last 10 minutes and hold on to the ball, hopefully get a little bit of momentum. I think every time we get the ball, we've been OK, um, but we're giving it up too easily. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, the game's hopefully in the balance. Um, we've got to make sure that, um, that extra person, you know, we really make count. We were talking about replacements pre-match. You said that's what you were looking at on the team sheet. Is this playing out the way you thought it was going to with regard to the benches? Yeah, I think so. I think um, Ronita, Kira Bevan's come on. They made a real difference. Um, I thought Gabriella and uh, both Lucy Burgess did a fantastic job to start. Apart from the penalty we're just going to lay down. But I think that, that that's what you want from your 23, from actually your whole squad, from the players that came down and warmed up and didn't even make the match day 23. Um, we need that full squad for the season. And you've got all the stats in front of you. How many carries has Sarah been had in the last 10 minutes? Unbelievable stat. Yeah, look, she's a tight head like no other. And she scrummages like she does, and she gets the carries as well. Um, she's been, uh, again, unbelievable today. That try was just, I think she deserved that. But it's now about Eliane's job now to take over that and, and, and go from there. So look, it's, it's, it's right in the balance. Another try makes it a bit more interesting. We'd like to. Dave, you sound as breathless as the girls down there, so I'll leave you to it. Another one who lives and breathes it, Dave Ward. Right down to the wire. Next uh, had the penalty, and we've gone to the lineup. Just to remind you, down to 14 players. Demi Swan. for a hair pull as Kira Bevan. Well, scrum half and then the Scotland hooker comes in to make sure that ball is theirs and it's knocked on to great applause from a decent crowd on the far side here at Sandy Park. Nine 
We talked about the set last week. Just against set last week. They just look so composed through the whole game. And of course, the scoreboard is in their favour. The first 40 minutes as well here. They look so composed. They just seem to be on edge. Yeah, they just haven't quite been able to manage the possession that they would have wanted or the way that they would have wanted to. Um, again, coming out in that second half, just a couple of unforced errors in really critical positions in terms of in the 22, giving easy opportunity back to Exeter, then they get another score on the scoreboard and then everything feels more pressurised and you're snatching at more things. You feel like you're chasing the game as we've spoken about. You know, spoken at length about how they play the game. It is ball in hand, it is moving it to width. We found a, probably a nicer balance in the last five, ten minutes. I think Lana Skeldon coming on, just got a bit more direct and through the middle. Abby Middlebrook has uh, had to come on with no Debbie Swan. Did well in that scrum as well. Michael Friday has, has made way. Tessier just drops back wait. into the pocket. And that was why, just to say to Bristol, don't know, we can play from down there. Final five minutes here at Sandy Park. Two teams have known each other so well. Bevan, Aitchison. Scout of good hands from her, but that's not a good pass from Phoebe Moritz. Unlike her. Hesketh, Jenny Hesketh, no, no, 23. No, no. She's no, on. Desperately trying to keep hold of that ball, just tidy things up after the loose pass. Aitchison wants it again, clapping those hands. Simi Pam, she can. Could have been a, a stretch even for Simi Pam, but she can run her in from 60. Wills waiting for that ball. Again, to it. Phoebe Murray holds on. And again, it's scrappy for Bristol. Aitchison having to, to go back, and then she asked Mentvali to make some ground. Brilliant for the former Worcester player. Good tackle, Laurie Craig. And back three from Exeter have been super. Defensively, as a pendulum, they work fantastically well. And they've got another penalty there. Tessier involved with a back three as well. You see their reaction. They know exactly what that means at this point in the game. When Bristol are on line breaks, attacking down the field. Brilliant break from Meg Varney. Shame she didn't look inside. Kira Bevan was tracking down the middle of the field, as all nines do. Just couldn't quite find her, couldn't get back inside and find her, but what a turnover from Exeter, as you say. Just the work rate to get back behind the ball. And you're 76 minutes into the game. Here we can see Mick Varley just picking her head up off the outside foot taking on that those back three and then it's Tessier again just straight over the ball referee deemed that she's she's on her feet and happy and that's all that matters and you can see what it means to Exeter 76th 77th minute read between the lines <laughs> this just, just sit there but at least he's been consistent with that all day um, Been some uh, decent uh, performances uh, across the park. I've yeah, just uh, mentioned a, a couple of them there in the last bit of live play, but uh, Emily Scout, time for your player of the match. Yeah, I think there's been some some brilliant performances. I think Ra Rachel Johnson in the eight shirt for Exeter has been fantastic all game in terms of her carries, obviously getting two tries as well. But I think for me, we've said her name a huge amount. Katie Buchanan down on this left wing. She's had the turnovers, she's had some brilliant breaks. And defensively, you think about the, the, the threat that Bristol pose, it's their wide game. And I think she especially has marshaled that kind of touchline incredibly well. So a huge congratulations to her, she's our player of the match. Katie Buchanan. Already a, a cup winner here to Exeter Chiefs, 
substitute in the, in the final back in June. Trying last week, but it's been our defensive work today, as he says, Gaza, has been quite superb for the young winger. And Katie Buchanan. Miller Mills. Saints. Sister Bridget, of course, a Scotland international. Laurie Kramer. Cantona. Tessier had to be really quick hands. She plays right flat, doesn't she? Tessier. She's going to be good for this club, you feel. Just growing and feeling away into this into this team, the nuances of of your new quarterback. Just want to keep this ball now, don't they, Exeter? And again, they beat Bristol here at Sandy Park. Bristol never managed to win here in the league. I'm sure part of them as well will be really after that bonus point. Win looks like it's in the bag. Tessier. <laughs> and 14 players. McDonald! They are going to get a bonus point right in the deck. And it's the fame and the power from the Red Roses star. Claudia McDonald, Exeter, have their bonus point. Worked. It was Tessier initially with the break. Really patient build up, as you say, they're always going to keep hold of the ball at this point, but they would have wanted that bonus point try out from Kramer. And Claudia McDonald does what she does best. Not had a huge amount of ball, probably not as much as she would have wanted in this game, but the one that matters big bend, outside step, and then in these huge in goal areas, just slides in here at Sunday Park. And that muscle memory, because she put the fan on dead wheels early in the first half and got some uh, some go forward down this right-hand side, didn't she? And that plenty, plenty fall and foul of that fan at international level and club level. She did it last week, she's done it again this week. This is the break from Tessier. Just, again, ambling cross-field initially gets really good go forward and then it's just about picking off that that short side now, Tessia, excellent break from her she's really grown into this game and you feel she's just grow and grow as the season goes on Claudia McDonald with the try the bonus point how crucial will that be block of, of six games to start the season some of these players and, and clubs that have never done before all here on the banner of PWR and kick that ball out to touch and Exeter have their win against the team they love beating victorious again here at Sandy Park for Exeter they coughed and splattered last week against Leicester put on a huge amount of pressure against the Bristol side who are handsome victors last week in their victory in sale. But it's Exeter on their 60th Premiership game, a good win in the end. Final saw Exeter Chiefs 29, Bristol Bears 14. And it really was a, a team performance. You think of the the players up front, the Totosis coming back into the side, Delika Menin, Linda van der Velden in that second row as well. They're under huge amounts of pressure from it, effectively uh, an England front five from, from Bristol. There's a back three that likes a Katie Buchanan, Ari Kramer, Claudia McDonald with that, uh, that bonus point try in the end. Looked in the balance at, at half time, did it 14 7. At the start of that second half, Exeter took control of this game. I have to know what uh, Susie Appleby said in the sheds at, at half time. 
and it was uh, Exeter who took control at the beginning of that second half. Tries from Rachel Johnson. She made a, a big impact, didn't she? Coming back into this side, the, uh, the USA International. There she is. Big smiles of her, Claudia McDonald. And then Claudia McDonald with that final score right at the end. Last five. One by the home side. We can scrap that out. The last six. One by the home side between these two. It was a, a proper ding dong game. Katie Buchanan, player of the match. Pitch side with LJ. Well, Katie, you are the player of the match today, the PWR player of the match. How much sweeter is it when the game's as tough as that one looks? Yeah, we um, obviously it was a great to get a win first um, round at home. So after falling short to them in the cup, it was great to get that victory at home with the fans at Sandy Park. So yeah. Susie keeps talking about the fact that you're rebuilding as a team this season, but it doesn't look like that. It looks like you've picked up where you left off. How does it feel within the camp? Do you feel like a, a new team or just Exeter Chiefs Women Reborn? Um, I feel like we're just Exeter Chiefs. We all know what we want from each other and we play for each other at the end of the day. And we're a family here, so we're all just doing it for each other and we want to get the results for everyone around us. So, Bristol Bears women have been very loud and proud about the fact that they want to be a top two team this year. Exeter Chiefs women may be going a little bit under the radar. Is it all about doing your work quietly this time round? Um, whenever, whatever other teams are saying, we're going to put in the graft. We're going to fight like we have, we did today. Um, we're going to like put in the effort that we know we can put in. So we don't really focus on the others. We focus on what we've come to do. So it's good. Well, congratulations, Katie. You are the PWR player of the match. Thank you very much. Thanks.